It's a uh, goop troop time. Okay, so I've noticed that my goop video from like September of 2018 has randomly started going on a huge tear up. And I think there's a couple really good reasons for this. For one, my videos are incredible. So YouTube's just finally realizing that. But in a more serious note, I think there's a couple major factors. For one, Netflix is releasing their like mini docu-series about goop uh, next Friday. And everybody's been freaking out about the damn vagina candle. So I was planning a little update for everybody on goop because they're thriving more now than ever. Even through all the drama surrounding the products and the business itself, Goop is thriving. How can we really milk the shit out of this? And obviously I had to talk about the damn candle, which is getting all the hype, but I just need to clarify real quickly. Uh, it's it's obviously a gimmick. The, the candle does not actually smell like her vagina. It's not supposed to smell like her hoo-ha. It's just supposed to smell like any hoo-ha, and then the name's just Beatty, obviously. But in reality, it doesn't actually smell or was even designed to smell like anybody's hoo-ha because it has products like cedar in it. It's a vagina, not a 1960s Ford Bronco. It doesn't need an air freshener. But yeah, obviously, it was a gimmick. I even honestly kind of wanted one just for shits and giggles, but the damn thing sold out. But because I realized that Netflix series was being made, I was originally gonna wait until after it released so that I could make a video talking about the Netflix series itself and just kind of some of the other stuff but I feel I feel like I kind of hit a bit of a crossroad there because I kind of realized that I might have a moral duty to try to encourage people not to watch or support this show because the more people watch it the more people support it even if you're watching it to hate on it Netflix just sees that as numbers and for all the amazing content they make there's no way they're gonna not make a follow-up to this if it does well even if they're just pointing out kind of like the flaws of Goop, as long as they're actively involved and like Gwyneth Paltrow's actively involved in the creation of those series, it's only gonna be so critical of her and the content. And I say that like, I really enjoy Gwyneth Paltrow as an actress. I just hate all of this. But even that kind of brought the moral thing of, well, if I talk about people not watching it and how they shouldn't watch it, is that just gonna let more people know that it exists even though Netflix is gonna probably do that thing where the second you turn on Netflix, it advertises it to you? Is it the double-edged sword that I'm just gonna make more people aware that it exists and then more people will watch it and then it'll look like it's doing better? But I feel like me at least talking out against it can maybe help people in their search of goop if they actually end up watching the show and thinking that some of it is logical and good ideas. And I kind of made that decision when I watched the trailer and realized that they're definitely gonna downplay some of the more serious medical claims that they've made, the lawsuits that they've suffered, and a lot of the other darker areas of Goop in favor of just talking about, you know, the, the female empowerment and the, the sexual health and sexual wellness. And those are all good things. Those are like the positive aspects of Goop is trying to make people more comfortable with their sexuality and just the, they're more comfortable with the female, but then they kind of counter being more comfortable with the female body by recommending things like vaginal steams and balancing creams and whatnot. So they're gonna do all that kind of stuff that sounds good at face value, and then they're gonna throw in the alternative medicine stuff for people that are just desperate for solutions to life. But again, the body positivity, caring for your female self is all great, but promoting unsubstantiated claims about vaginal steams and recommending people put porous jade eggs up their hoo-ha are all things that are very much not great. They actually really suck. Now I went over a lot of that stuff in my last video. If you haven't seen it, I will have it tagged somewhere up above and maybe down below. But I think most people have heard about Goop at this point and a lot of people just kind of laugh at it, but it's clearly not all jokes when they continue to make so much money and they're not even in the realm of struggling. They are a very, very successful high profile business. Cause it doesn't seem to matter how many scientists, doctors, psychologists, and psychologists Psychiatrists point out the issues with the claims that Goop makes, people still buy it. And it doesn't matter that at their like retreats and conferences, they have people sign liability releases that would completely absolve the company of any responsibility should the services, products, or equipment involved in the event results in the individual requiring medical attention. They're literally saying it in their disclaimer that stuff that they are providing could result in you needing to seek further medical attention while claiming they have the secrets to health and wellness. They're literally telling people that their products could cause people serious bodily harm and it's still not enough to dissuade people from spending hundreds of dollars on detox products. They even provide products that other articles on their website tell you to ignore because they're toxins and secretly destroying your life. 
And that's a common factor across the website because almost every article is just being used to promote or shill other products. And eventually some of those are probably gonna clash. Because one of the only ways you can keep those customers as repeat lifelong customers is by coming up with new trendy illnesses, diseases, toxins, parasites, different things like that that you can sell them new products for. Eventually some of that's gonna have to overlap when, oh my God, this hidden thing is ruining your life when that hidden thing was in a product that they were promoting not even a month earlier. Like people will still buy this even though they had to pay $145,000 for unsubstantiated claims that they were making about those jade vaginal eggs, which I mentioned in the last video, which I get is just a slap on the wrist, but it should at least tell people that this company has already been hit for making unsubstantiated claims. And they also change a lot of their articles. They change the definition of items. They take out things where they make claims that, oh, this can help with depression. This can help with anxiety. They remove a lot of that stuff because they get called out on it by actual medical health uh, professionals and they remove it before they can get that huge wave of backlash on them from the actual professional community. But by then they've already sold so many of these products to vulnerable people. Like at one point they were literally saying that the clothing they were selling had medical and antidepressive benefits. Now there's some stuff that they promote that can't really hurt people. Some of it might even have like loose claims as to how it can maybe help with colds and flus. Like there's obviously plants, roots, and different things like that that have some form of medical benefits. But a hell of a lot of the stuff they recommend can 100% hurt you. And their insistence on trying to claim that they're seeking scientific backing can be pretty shady when you get one person to back some of their crazy claims and then the entire scientific community is saying, this is ridiculous, this is not safe, this is not healthy or it's just flat out lies. I know a lot of people try to talk about the benefits that Goop has for encouraging women to take control of their own lives and well-being in a world that oftentimes disregards their issues. But the issue is, is that Goop isn't giving you that platform to be believed. They're just marketing more towards you and taking advantage of the fact that you maybe have been turned away by doctors or had issues that you're experiencing that people didn't necessarily know what was wrong or didn't want to take you seriously about. A lot of doctors won't just give you medicine because of something that you're talking about if they can't find the underlying reason behind it, but Goop will be so quickly to point out, oh, you're suffering this? It's, uh, it's this problem that we've just come up with. And here's a handy list of products that you can buy to alleviate these symptoms. It becomes a huge issue when they lie about the efficacy of their products. And when they start making up problems for their products to cure. Telling people they all have parasites coming up with new toxins every couple weeks and recommending bloodletting for Lyme disease while simultaneously stating there's no evidence to support alternative treatments for Lyme disease. The author says that there is basically no evidence for alternative treatments, but that they could be valuable and to work with an experienced, well-qualified practitioner. Experienced in what? In treatments that don't work? You just said that these treatments are not evidence-based. Yes, there are some issues that can pop up that science hasn't necessarily acknowledged yet that some people are like, no, this is there's 100% something wrong with me, even if science doesn't have a word for it yet. But there's a huge difference between that and then these companies just constantly coming up with new things and new medications and supplements and things for you to take to solve problems that aren't really there. And you can see this in the trailer. Women that have been at the end of the ropes trying to find solutions to their problems and Goop is there to provide it and seek the answer to it for a fee, a very large fee if you follow everything they recommend forever. Now, obviously because it's the new year, Goop is offering a lot of trendy health and wellness options from detox and diet recommendations to clothing that I feel if you move fast enough, you might be able to give somebody a seizure. And these really nifty transcranial headphones that use transcranial electric stimulation to improve how quickly you learn physical skills, whether you're learning something new or fine tuning years long practice. And my personal favorite, this foam roller water bottle combo that I don't think anyone has ever wanted and probably shouldn't trust. A foam roller is literally something you're putting all of your body weight on to help relieve muscle tension. And they're great, foam rollers are amazing. And a water bottle is something filled with liquid. All of your body weight, a liquid container. I just think that somewhere along the line, something here could go very wrong. Both of those things at a gym are very important separately. But if you want to spend your money on that kind of stuff, that, that, that's fine. The health and wellness and fitness industry is massive into stuff. They're constantly coming up with new products to sell to people. Some of them work, some of them don't. If you want to spend your money on them, whatever. But the real 
damage and danger comes with a lot of the detox recommendations they have. So first off, I've said this for years, if you wanna detox, all you need to do is drink more water, cut out things like alcohol and soda pop, eat better, and make sure you're getting enough fiber and your liver is gonna do the rest. Your body is very efficient in doing what it does. You just need to make sure you're putting the right stuff in, cutting out a lot of the wrong stuff, and it's gonna do its job. And by putting the right stuff in and cutting out the wrong stuff, I don't mean cutting out all of your food and just drinking these like cayenne pepper turmeric based drinks or juices so many companies promote these long-term cleanses and and juice cleanses and fasts and different things like that that can seriously mess with your body and its natural metabolism and a lot of the times they're really horrible for you too and while they say it's largely for detox and overall wellness a lot of the benefit or a lot of the allure there is the diet aspect if you're just kind of drinking liquids for you know three to five days you're definitely thinking, okay, well, I'm not taking in as many calories. So this is gonna be a really fast way to uh, jumpstart my weight loss, but it's not sustainable. And it could probably cause a hell of a lot more damage than good. And the detox ideas go behind your nether regions too, ladies. As I mentioned, you don't need these different products, these steams, these whatevers to keep things clean down there. Your body does an excellent job maintaining that area on its own. That's literally its job. As long as you just treat it properly and have regular normal hygiene, you don't need to be shoving stuff up there, flushing stuff up there, steaming stuff out of there. You're more likely to cause an issue that actually requires medication to treat versus just letting it do its thing. If OBGYNs are telling people that all of this stuff is BS, you should be listening to them, not Gwyneth Paltrow. This is another one of those areas where they end up removing or changing some of their claims and the reviews and recommendations because they've been called out, most likely because they want to try to avoid being sued. Specifically when it came to the steam and they were claiming that it could balance women's hormones level, when they got called out by Dr. Jen Gunter, they removed those claims because they're BS. Now back to the show a bit. Now obviously professionals are horrified that this show has been allowed to happen, especially in a way that leaves uh, Paltrow and the other goop higher ups control over how the information's being displayed. People are definitely concerned that this show is gonna get a lot of female viewers, young and old, that might not know the, the darker side of goop and may end up believing a lot of his claims because some of it's being presented in, as I mentioned before, a female positive, body positive, sexual positive way, and then blending that simultaneously with all of this marketing of pseudoscience. In my opinion, that's completely disingenuous, but definitely an area where Goop and other pseudoscience and alternative medicines companies really uh, shine. Because not only does it mislead people into believing unsubstantiated claims, it's also strongly blurring the lines between real scientifically backed products and and research with marketing products. And that's obvious without even seeing the show because like I mentioned before, almost every article on Goop exists to promote products that they sell. I know it's pretty common that people just wanna dismiss anybody who can believe this stuff as stupid, but the world can kind of be difficult to navigate out there. Not everybody uh, looks things up in a way that they're expecting it to be wrong. They're trying to find out, you know, is goop safe? Is this safe? And honestly, just from doing a little search today, I search goop could cause damage. And other than the very top one, which admitted is seven terrible health tips from Gwyneth Paltrow from almost four years ago now, the next six or seven options on this page are all Goop articles. So it's all stuff that Goop wrote, Goop recommended, and it's, it's stuff that's gonna convince people to click on these articles and potentially believe the contents of them. And while I do think there's some people out there that are dumb and wanna just ignore science because they think it's lying to them for some reason, obviously there are areas where the scientific and medical community have completely screwed up. There are people out there that are just genuinely trying to find answers and are being misled down these webs of just horrible advice. And they're being barraged by these claims either from websites like Goop or multi-level marketing companies or essential oil companies. And it's not just a Goop thing. This is something going on in a bunch of different markets, a lot of the time specifically targeting women, and it's gotta stop. So that is gonna do it for my little update on Goop. This might've been a lot longer than I expected it to be. But uh, like I said, I'm just kind of horrified that, that Netflix kind of gave it this platform. And I know it's gonna do well. People are gonna watch it either because they believe it or because they're, they're horrible and want to make fun of it. Uh, but I do think that it's kind of irresponsible. Obviously, I haven't seen it yet uh, and I'm debating maybe I should watch it and do a review on it so that other people don't necessarily have to watch it. I'm going to be at Sundance Film Festival when it drops, but I might still have time to give it a watch that night or like in between waiting for movies. But uh, let me know what you guys are thinking in the comment section down below. Uh, thank you again. We just hit 60K 
today I, if this upload gets up on time but on Friday we hit 60,000 subscribers which is absolutely incredible uh, again thank you all so much I hope you're all having a fantastic day and we'll catch you all later